So as we saw in the previous video, we actually created a Docker container and accessed the VS Code web UI through the browser. So in this video, we'll actually create another container which is holding a React project and we'll connect these two containers, one for VS Code and one for React. And as a result, we'll have a totally remote development environment without anything installed in our client machine. So if you want to learn more, stick with me. Hello and what's up guys, Medium Guy here. If you haven't watched the previous video, I'll put the links down below where we created a Docker container and running VS Code inside it and we actually accessed it through the internet. And the other one, we created a development environment for a React project totally in a Docker environment. So in this video, we'll merge these two projects and as a result, we'll have a totally remote development environment, which will be able to access through the internet without any need to install any kind of applications in our client machine. So without any delay, let's get down to work. So if I hit LS, you see that I have a Docker compose file. So if I nano the Docker compose file, as you can see, I've got the exact same service where I created the VS code, which actually enables us to access through the web browser. And we have another service for the awesome React project that we had in the Dockerization video series, where we created a development environment in a Docker container. And by using the hot reloading built in the React project with create React app, we were actually able to see whatever changes that we made on the code stored on the host machine which is mounted inside the container again through the web browser so as you can see the point over here is that the slash code directory is mounted both inside the VS Code service and the React service also. So we have one port to actually access the in-browser VS Code and another port to actually see the results of the changes that we make through the VS Code to the React project's files. So I'll hit Control X to get out of the nano. I'll cd into code directory. I'll hit LS. As you can see, I have a very basic React project files plus a Docker file. So if I say nano Docker file, as you can see, this is a basic Docker file to actually copy and install the required packages and then copy the project files and then hitting npm start, which will actually run our React project. So I'll hit control X by hitting docker build-t and giving a name and passing dot as the context, I'll be actually able to build my image, which then I'll be able to run it through the docker compose file. So my image is ready. And if I come to the parent directory, I'll hit ls in here. If I say docker compose up-t, my two containers will be running. And if I say docker compose ps, I see that the two containers are running, one being awesome react with the port 3000 exposed and the other one VS code with the port 8443 and with the code directory mounted to the both containers. So if I go to the browser and hit the IP address of the server that both the containers are running on. By hitting its port, I should be able to access the web UI for the VS Code. And another tab, I'll open the port 3000 where my React project is exposed. So as you can see, I have the VS Code web UI which holds my React project files. And in this tab over here on the port 3000, I have the very basic react projects template so 
I'll open the SRC directory and inside this I'll try to edit the app.txt file I'll try to make some changes over here like I'll remove the a tag and I'll say hello vs code I'll save this and if I move to the react tab over here I can see that the a tag is gone and hello docker is changed to the hello vs code as the result I'm seeing so basically whatever change that I make over here like for example I'll comment the image I go back to the react tab I see that the image is gone so basically the thing that happened over here is that I have a directory mounted both to the react container and also to the vs code container so by changing the codes in the web ui of the vs code the changes will be taken effect to the actual files on my machine and because it is also mounted to the react container the changes will also be taken effect in the react container and then the react hot reloading will detect the file changes and as a result i'll be able to see the changes through the web browser so this can be done to any other projects in any other languages the vs code container is not dependent on the language of the second container that is actually handling our project so i chose react you can choose whatever language that you want so as we saw in this video there is no need to install any kind of applications in my machine as a client that is using the vs code and of course if i expose these services in a server with a public ip or a domain i'll be able to actually access the vs code web ui and the project that is running through the internet from anywhere that i want basically this is a totally remote development environment set up for developers so with that that's all for this video i hope you got the idea and found the content useful if you like the content just don't forget to give a visit to my other videos on my channel i'll put all the files and configurations in my github repository which i'll put the link down below also i'll put the other videos links down below so you'll be able to access them easily also don't forget to like and subscribe and with that i hope to see you in the next videos